This weekend, I read this book authored by Howard Marks that goes by the title, The Most Important Thing, Uncommon Sense for the Thoughtful Investor. For ones who haven't heard of Howard Marks, he is the co-founder and co-chairman of Oak Tree Capital Limited, through which he manages over $160 billion in assets. Mr. Marks specializes in distressed securities and his funds have produced post-fees long-term returns of 19% per annum. Now, Marx is admired in the investment community for his memos, which detail his investment strategies and insight into the economy and are posted publicly on the Oak Tree website. In fact, so revered are his writings that even a gentleman named Warren Buffett said, when I see memos from Howard Marx in my email, they are the first thing I open and read. I've always learned something. And so in this video, I have compiled not one, not two, but 10 of the most important things I have picked up from Mr. Mark's book and his memos. Additionally, I have included stuff from some other material I've picked along the way, like podcast episodes and articles, the links to which can be found in the description of this video. Let's begin. Howard Marks stresses on the importance of intellectual humility, which is quite simply the awareness that there are limits to one's knowledge. The recent COVID-led crisis is an example where millions of investors have been trying to predict the occurrence and reoccurrence of the disease while knowing nothing about it. In his book, Marx advises investors to accept that they cannot see the future and should restrict themselves to mostly doing things that are within their power. In fact, one choice that investors can controllably make in the intermediate term is to decide whether they want to be aggressive or defensive. You see, this choice is entirely in the investor's control and the follow-up on that can include decisions on how you want to assign your portfolio weights to equity, debt and gold, etc. How much is your tolerance level? What are your goals, etc. So said simply, aim to invest your money, your time and your energies in those scenarios and assets that are in your control. Point blank following the market does not lead to overperformance. And which is why Howard Marks repeatedly says that to generate better investment returns, one has to separate oneself from the herd. This might mean things like building an investment thesis on stocks that are not followed by analysts, examining unpopular, underappreciated and out of favor securities, considering controversial and seemingly scary investment opportunities, investing in special situations, investing in distressed sectors, etc. Of course, while this approach may sound practical and simple, it is a lot difficult in practice as it requires a lot more research on your part and more importantly, rejecting the consensus is never easy. Further, Mr. Marx also insists that just being an ad hoc contrarian is not a successful strategy. And for this reason, it is not just enough to be different, but it is all the more important to also be right. The margin of safety is a key concept amongst value investors when searching for undervalued securities. The term and concept was introduced by Benjamin Graham in his book, The Intelligent Investor, and quantifies the difference between the real or fundamental value of a business and the price one pays for it. Simply put, the goal of the value investor, or for that matter, any investor should be to pay a lot lower than the real value of that business, which then leads up to a higher margin of safety. Now, Howard Marks was a stickler for this and insisted that an investor's confidence towards any investment should be commensurate with its margin of safety. Essentially, higher the margin of safety, higher are the odds of investing success, and therefore higher should be the level of investing confidence in that stock. Marx goes on to add that when defining margin of safety, in addition to the financials and price, one should also determine the stability and the underlying predictability of the business and the industry it operates in. With data, charts, reports and news readily available on our laptops and mobile phones, 
it's getting a lot more difficult for an investor to have an information edge in today's world. This is where Howard Marks recommends that serious investors should gravitate to an investment edge that is to base one's investment on a better understanding of qualitative and structural factors. This includes things like a more updated comprehension of the business model or an understanding of the intangible assets or workforce knowledge in terms of the talents which are available within the company, changing consumer patterns, patterns which can be changed with structural nudges, technological disruptions, etc. Marx reckons that it is one's investment edge that will determine an investor's success and will require a lot more specialization in a subject which goes beyond the numbers. In the same thread, Marx also observes and remarks that rapid technological changes are fast diluting competitive advantages, especially with respect to traditional modes. According to Marx, risk is not about volatility as many finance professors would often quote. Instead, the concept of risk should be understood in terms of the likelihood of an investor losing one's initial investment. In his book, Marx advocates the importance of avoiding losses. In fact, he goes on to say, if we avoid the losers, the winners will take care of themselves. Now, losses can be avoided by avoiding risks. But if one does that, then he or she is likely to avoid returns as well. Instead, Marx advocates controlling the risk, which can be done in a number of ways like diversifying one's assets across multiple classes, rebalancing them periodically, respecting one's risk tolerance, having a long term horizon, linking one's investment with goals, thinking globally, asset allocation, etc. In other words, Howard Marx is talking a language similar to what we have been saying on this YouTube channel for some time now, and we have been executing that for our investors with ET Money's Genius Portfolios. You see, Genius does everything that an intelligent investment framework needs to do, so that investors like you and me can, without active intervention, make more returns, can make them consistently with a lot less volatility and with adequate downside protection. For most investors, a loss in one's portfolio is a bad outcome, and that's understandable. But Howard Marks encourages us to think and invest in terms of the probability of a bad outcome. You see, what he's saying here is that when one invests in risky investments, like say a microcap stock or as an angel investor in a startup, one needs to factor in multiple scenarios ranging from a 100x return to losing 100% of the capital. This not only helps in getting a better understanding of the situation, but investors also get a clear understanding of the reward risk ratio. And it's somewhere within this range that big opportunities can be found. For instance, when everyone believes something is risky, their unwillingness to buy can sometimes reduce its price to the point where the entire investment is not risky at all. This requires some level of preparedness on the investor's part, which can be easily done by mapping the expected outcomes with its probabilities. So the next time you look at an investment or scenario, do understand how much of it is possible, how much is plausible, and definitely how far is it probable. Howard Marx believes that everything from investor moods to stock market crashes is governed by cycles. In fact, he's even written a best-selling book on the subject called Mastering the Market Cycle, where he puts forward two rules. Rule number one is that most things will prove to be cyclical. And rule number two is that some of the greatest opportunities present itself when other people forget rule number one. And there's a lot of truth in what he says. After all, we often see investors overvaluing companies when they are doing well and undervaluing them when things get difficult. In essence, the financial markets follow a pendulum-like swing between euphoria and depression. The celebration of positive developments and obsessing over negatives leads to the same securities being overpriced and underpriced in a matter of days. Howard Marx believes this transient nature needs to be appreciated 
and the diligent and experienced investor should definitely take advantage of these cycles. The biggest errors in investing are not informational or analytical but are more behavioral in nature. Today with every investor having access to the same and a lot of information, what matters is how one chooses to react to the constant bombardment of data and opinions. Marx often says that it's the swing that really gets people into their biggest troubles, especially with many investors swinging in the wrong direction at the wrong time. In that context, he is pointing out to greed and enthusiasm, especially when the markets are high and pricey. Additionally, Marx often talks about the perils of herd behavior, the fact that retail investors come last in complex deals, the sins of overconfidence, the importance of not keeping risk aversion as a constant, and to learn from history. In fact, on this last point, he said something in a podcast which I found very catchy. And he said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. So as an investor, always remember what got you into trouble a few months or few years back and train your behavior to avoid it or even better, take advantage of it. Every once in a while, someone might make a successful bet on an improbable and uncertain outcome. Now, a favorable outcome might make us look like a genius and it's often only the more superior and seasoned investor who recognizes that the end result has nothing to do with skill and is actually a product of luck. In his 2014 memo, Howard Marks acknowledges the importance of luck and says that even the hardest workers and best decision makers will fail to succeed consistently without luck. Specific to investing, Marx believes that a certain degree of luck is needed for an investor's version of future events to materialize. And since it is impossible to get it right every single time, his own strategy of improving his chances of getting lucky is by scouting for investing opportunities in less crowded and inefficiently priced developments like spin-offs, CEO changes and post-bankruptcy reorganizations. Howard Marx contends that while investing is simple, it is definitely not easy. And he compactly lays down this premise in three tasks. One, work very hard at knowing more than others about companies and industries. Two, control your emotions. And thirdly, behave in a contrarian and counter-cyclical manner. We've gone through each of these points in greater details in this video, along with some other suggestions, tips, and strategies that Howard Marks has put forward in many of his writings and interviews. Once you are done with this video, I strongly recommend you watch some of Howard Marks' videos on YouTube. And if you get the time, do read his memos, which are a treasure trove of investing knowledge to beginners and advanced investors alike. I'd like to end this video with a simple, uncomplicated quote by Howard Marks, which explains his philosophy in a single line, which goes as, the process of intelligently building a portfolio consists of buying the best investments, making room for them by selling the lesser ones and staying clear of the worst. Definitely, there are shades of ET money genius in this quote. So if you haven't tried out our intelligent investing service yet, then do give it a try on the ET Money app and join tens of thousands of subscribers who are using the service. Thank you for your time. Do tap on that like button. Do subscribe to our channel. Do share this video with friends and family. And I look forward to catching up with you on another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.